Let's take a look at some of the features of the Ruby code editor. After installing the plugin, you'll find it under the window menu. If you go a little further down here, it should say Ruby code editor. And when it opens, it opens like this. By default, it might look a little lighter like that. But if you want to, you can always go back to the options and change it to a dark scheme or to a light scheme, depending on your preference. Some of the features that you have in this editor are, first of all, you have this big editor window where you can type anything. You can um, use classic uh, script and any, any of the functions will be highlighted the way they were supposed to be. Um, if you have brackets, that are matching. It'll highlight brackets. It has tabs. Whichever function you need should work properly um, right out of the box. <clears throat> then in addition to having a new document, you can open any file for editing. So I can just open this one here. This can be a rather large file. I've written plugins on this, but you see here, there's there's my file. And of course, you can maximize the window. I just have it smaller for the video right now. Then if you want to save the editor content, you can do that right here and load as many as you want to. It only loads one at a time as a little trick. One thing that you can do if you need to load two at a time, you can actually just call the Ruby code editor again and it'll open a second window and you can run both of them in parallel. Now back to the Ruby code editor. Some of the other functions in this toolbar here, the next one explores the current selection. So if you have something selected in your model and click this button, you see um, some of the features related to the selection. So for example, right now I know that this is a component instance. This might help me write my code properly later. There's the definition name and some of the other properties that might be of, of help. If your, prop, uh, your a selected object is a d dynamic component, which Susan is, then the next button up here will list its attributes. This is useful if you want to double check any kind of um, attributes. Uh, it'll uh, make a list of the attribute dictionaries and the contained attributes. So for example, you see here there's a dynamic attributes dictionary right here and has a bunch of attributes related to it. The next button shows a classic Ruby console. This is the one that would come up if you go to window Ruby console. This is our classic one-liner Ruby um, that we can used to calculate, for example, or run one line of code, of course. For now, we'll close it, but sometimes it's useful actually having both of them open so that any errors, or at least the more advanced errors, get shown in the Ruby console that'll help you debug whatever problems you have in, in your main code. Then the last one of these buttons lets you print the code if you want to do that. All right. So when you have some code in here, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, and you want to run it, you just simply press the Run button. Everything gets executed. In this case here, we made a bunch of boxes. And it's right here. If you want to undo the last action, and that means everything that's in this list, it'll undo it this way. Now you could make a change here. If I only want two in each direction and play the same again, that's what I get. So this is a way to in iteratively work through your code and change things and make them just the way you want it to be. If you need to look something up, just as any of these functions here, you can use the next tab up here to go to the reference browser. Reference browser, you, for example, have access to the API reference. This is, of course, Trimble now. And these are all the functions that you might need. If I go anywhere and find a code snippet that I like, I can now copy this one 
go back to the editor and paste it right in here. There are other references here too and I encourage you to look through those. In the editor itself you can also use this drop down right here to add any kind of code snippets. There are some Ruby snippets, there are some SketchUp specific snippets and when you do that they get inserted at the cursor position right here and you can then modify them just the way you need them to be. This helps you write code pretty quickly. There's also a way to highlight syntax if you need to and then of course there are a bunch of options that you can modify. So in principle this is how the code editor works. Use it to write the code in this book and execute it and modify it the way you want to.